Good evening and welcome tonight. Prince more narrow note to allow old and new currencies circulate at the same time. The Council of State recommends fourth year implementation of CBN's narrow redesign policy, but accepts the initiative. Nigerians continue to grapple with the challenges posed by the cash crunch as they besiege banks and ATMs as CBN's deadline for narrow swap expires today. APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu pledges to assemble best hands, irrespective of tribe and religion, to rebuild the country if elected as president. And a new Bloomberg poll puts Labour Party presidential flag bearer Peter Obi in the lead among the presidential candidates. On business news tonight, Nigeria's forex reserves declined by 167.87 million to $36.82 billion, the lowest level since September 2021. On sports news tonight, Manchester City FC manager Pep Guardiola insists he has no intention of leaving the English champions after the club were charged with financial rules breaches by the Premier League. And from Abuja, the nation's capital appeal court in Kano upholds the election of Amin Wali as the Kano State PDP governorship flag bearer as Senator Emmanuel Bwacha emerges winner in Taraba APC governorship rerun primary. And from the international news scene in London, grief has turned to anger as bereaved communities and opposition parties criticize the Turkish president for being insufficiently prepared for such a devastating disaster. The old narrow notes for the new notes ends today. But the Council of State has faulted the implementation of the Naira redesign policy, although members accepted the initiative by the Central Bank of Nigeria. During this meeting today, the Council also advised the President to print more money or allow old and new notes circulate concurrently to ease the tension. Briefing State House correspondence after the Council meeting, chaired by the President, Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. And Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, said that the Council highlighted the need for aggressive action by the CBN to ensure adequate supply of the Naira in the system. Our State House correspondent, Gloria Omizoke, reports. Former presidents of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, Abdul Salami Abubakar, and Yakubu Gowan, are led by President Muhammadu Buhari into the chamber, where the Vice President is also present for the Council of State meeting. It's the first hybrid meeting of the Council, as former President Olusegun Obasanjo attends virtually alongside five other governors. Members of the National Council of State, comprising the President of the Senate, Speaker of the House of Representatives, former Chief Justices of Nigeria, Governors of Boronu, Eboi, Kaduna, Taraba, Gombe, Kwara, Lagos, and Service Chiefs are also present. The Governor of the Central Bank, Mr. Godwin Emefili, Chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and the Inspector General of Police, Mr. Usman Al-Kali Baba, are among those invited to brief the Council on crucial subjects including the currency swap and the 2023 elections. After over five hours, the outcome is illuminated. We are on course as far as election is concerned, and we are happy with the level of preparation by INEC and the institutions. And then two, relating to the NARA redesign policy, the policy stands, but then the council agreed that there is need for aggressive action. Many views were proffered, particularly that the CBN governor should look into making sure that money is available, the new money is available in quantum. And there were suggestions too, that if the new money is not in a circulation or printing them could be difficult, the old money that hasn't been changed could be recirculated and pumped into circulation to ease the tension, particularly for the poor people in our society who just need a little sum of money to buy their food, buy their drugs for daily basis. With, with all of the advice that has been given, um, the executive, they know what to do. And I think um, um, as we move on, um, the, Mr. President will make, you know, um, 
his thoughts, you know, and, and his views on all of that, right? He'll make them known to, to the nation. The AGF also shares his thoughts on the recent Supreme Court's judgment on the currency swap. Notwithstanding the fact that a matter is in court, it is not out of place for the parties, particularly the parties of interest, to consider and do the needful, if the need arises, which may eventually translate into either the discontinuance of the action or perhaps piling of the terms of settlement or reconsideration. The president had on February 3 asked for seven days, which expires today, to resolve the crisis caused by the scarcity of the new Naira notes. Nigerians are expecting that the president would announce his position to ease all encumbrances. From the presidential villa, Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Well, we await the announcement by the president. The Kano state government has joined in filing a suit against the federal government at the Supreme Court in respect of the Naira redesign policy by the CBN. The Kano state attorney general, through his counsel, Sunusi Musa, is asking the apex court to declare that the president, Muhammad Buhari, cannot unilaterally direct the CBN to recall the now old 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira bank banknotes without recourse to the Federal Executive Council and the National Economic Council, respectively. The Kano government is also praying a mandatory order seeking a reversal of the federal government's policy to recall the 200, 500 and 1,000 Naira notes from circulation due to the policy affecting the economic well-being of over 20 million Kano citizens. It wants a mandatory order compelling the federal government to reverse the Naira redesign policy for alleged failure to comply with 1999 constitution as amended. Well, staying back to the federal capital territory, there have been reactions trailing the deadline for the new Naira note swap by the Central Bank of Nigeria, although halted by the Supreme Court. Abuja residents continue to flock around banks, waiting endlessly in queues to withdraw monies from their bank accounts, as our correspondent observed. Long queues of residents of the nation's capital waiting endlessly at the automated teller machines, ATM, to make withdrawals. And yet others try to get into the banking halls to deposit their old Naira notes. It's the last day of the February 10 deadline set by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, when the old notes of the three highest denominations will cease to be a legal tender. This perhaps explains why the banks are crowded with customers who want to get the new notes. However, they are disappointed. The money is not available. Even yesterday, I was here, but there was no money. I wasted all the time, transport, I went home with nothing. I was only trying, I bought water, pure water. I was only holding on to my transport very tight. Let me not trade from here down to where I came from. We suffer to get money. Now we are suffering to collect the money and spend it. It's bad. Government to look on to the police. There's an export there, extend this thing. Even at 30 days, I'm mandated every bank. Every bank should bring the money. At the expiration of the initial January 31 deadline, the CBN set a new deadline of February 10 for the old Naira notes and the new ones to run concurrently as legal tender. <laughs> However, the extension has not had the needed impact. Rather, the scarcity of the new Naira notes persists. To me, by extending the date, it is not the solution. If you want this solution to be solved so that every Nigeria can feel at home, let them make this new currency to be much available. The only sol solution we need now is money to be here so that we can... I do apologize for halting that report uh, abruptly. We'll try to bring it back as soon as we can. It's been just as stressful for people in Port Hark of the River State Capital. They've been expressing their woes uh, regarding the Naira swap crisis now halted by the Supreme Court. Channel Television was on the streets of the capital to gauge the mood. At the busy garrison flyover in Port Hark of the River State Capital, it's a normal work day and people are going about their normal businesses. Nevertheless, they are not unaware of the recent developments in the country with the Naira redesign policy and the challenges many now face. 
It's an issue that's of serious national concern and one which the Supreme Court order suspending the deadline has brought relief for those stuck with the old notes. Relief only for some. This POS attendant says her business is still being negatively impacted. Since federal government, some, some state governors took federal government to court, they said they will not increase it to five days. But with this, some people still, they still refuse to collect this old money. They say since what they heard, since what some lame men heard is today, they refuse to collect the old money. And the new money is not coming forth. What, we, what are we going to do? Hey, they have said something about it, but we are not getting the feedback. We don't know whether the old money is going today or the new old money is going to stay. So we don't know anything about it. They should tell us what to do and tell us how to get money. We cannot go and buy okra in, in, in supermarkets where old mama is selling okra in the market. Interestingly, a lot of people have heard of the Supreme Court order, but they seem to be unaware of the full details or how it affects them directly. A resident claims that she was told at a bank that after the February 10th deadline, they will stop receiving the old notes as only branches of the CBN will be authorized to do so. Some banks, which like bank I'm coming out from, like some banks like Access Bank are telling today is the deadline. That if you don't submit your own era notes, it will not be valid any longer. In a ruling on Wednesday, February the 8th, a seven-man panel of the Supreme Court, led by Justice John Okoro, unanimously ordered that the old Naira notes remain in circulation after Friday, February the 10th, stopping the federal government in an expert application brought by three northern states of Kaduna, Kogi and Zamfara. Many anxiously await the next adjourned date of February the 15th to know which direction things will go. Crisis of confidence, unforeseen circumstance, consequences, beg your pardon, and program congestion. Some of the reasons the currency redesign program has generated undesired results. It's according to economist and CEO of financial derivatives company, Bess Macrovani, who knows that in spite of the good intention behind the initiative, it's now causing a strain on the economy. The economist explains, explained this on our program, the 2023 verdict. On a given day, people are paying money into the bank and people are withdrawing money. But when there's a crisis of confidence, when people withdraw money, nobody, not, no money goes back into the banking system. So the, the, the banks are dry. The only, the only one must apply cash for them, central bank. People who have lost confidence in cash have taken the, the money out. So exactly what you wanted to avoid is what you are getting. If anybody who has money now is keeping it, I'd rather have a rat eat it because it's taking a long time. Or an umbrella come, the probability of an umbrella coming when he knows I have no cash is low. But if I pay the money into a bank and I don't get it out, the money is trapped. That is where the crisis of competence comes. Another thing that we must know is that 39% of Nigerians are entrepreneurs, directly or indirectly. And 16% of all activity in this country is wholesale and retail trade. If you take the assumption that, it, that all, almost all trades in the markets and the informal markets are settled by cash, and only marginally by POS, you'll find that the velocity of circulation of money, which is very important, is 16 times. This is very complicated. But what it does mean is that three times in a month, a woman who is selling rice or gari and all of that, turns her money, sells, and takes the money to buy back. If the cash is trapped, then you have, you have actually stopped her from earning money. The consequences today are that and I, I check this out in the market. For a bag of rice today, we have, if you buy an old notes, you ask you to bring 42,000. If you buy a new notes, you pay 40,000. If you buy by transfer to the account, you pay 41,000. Some have no money, so they pay by credit. If you are taking credit, it's 45,000. So you have multiple pricing, which has serious implications. In part two, after the break, Bloomberg poll puts Labour Party leader uh, Peter Obi, Labour Party's presidential candidate, Sir Peter Obi, in the lead ahead of other presidential candidates ahead of the February 25th presidential election. We'll have that in a moment. Please join us again. Welcome back. If it has joined us, watching the news at 10 live on Channels Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories. 
print more naira notes to allow all the new currencies circulate at the same time. A Council of State recommends false implementation of the CBN's naira redesign policy, now halted by the central make a pardon, uh, redesign policy, but accepts the initiative. However, Nigerians continue to grapple with the challenges posed by the cash crunch as they besiege banks and ATMs. With the CBN deadline for Naira swap expiring today, despite halt by the C by the Supreme Court, an APC presidential candidate Bola Tinubu pledges to assemble best hands, irrespective of tribe or religion, to rebuild the country if elected as president. Plus, a new Bloomberg poll puts Labour Party's presidential flag bearer Peter Obi in the lead among the presidential candidates. To the political campaigns now, the presidential candidates of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Bola Tinubu, is urging Nigerians to vote for him as president to enable him make life meaningful for citizens. Senator Tinubu stated this in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital, when he met government officials and traditional rulers to solicit their support ahead of the general election. Assure them his plans are to use his wealth of experience to identify capable hands, irrespective of tribe and religion in rebuilding the country. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in the company of his running mate and members of his campaign council at the banquet hall of the Kogi State Government House to meet with traditional rulers in the state and government officials. Governor Yahaya Bello welcomes the campaign train to the Confluence State, promising that the state is ready to reward the party candidates' fight for democracy. I can assure you, Your Excellency, Kogi State, we are going to deliver the highest percentage in terms of votes to the coffers. When you compare our percentage relative to Lagos and to Kano, we are going to beat every, every state in this coming general election. So, Your Excellency, you have been vindicated. We have been vindicated. Some people try to inflict certain hardship on our people. The difference is now clear. Those who actually want the interest of Nigeria at heart and those who are simply playing to the gallery. The presidential candidate wants the traditional rulers and state officials to mobilize grassroots support for him ahead of the elections and promises to deliver democratic dividends to the people if elected. I don't see why Ajakuta is not prosperous <laughs> till now our cases our moms elect me the president <laughs> I see the difference in thinking <laughs> Elect me the president. Forget your differences in tribe or distances. Let me be your president. And you will see prosperity. Although Governor Bello will not be returning in the 2023 general election, he has promised to deliver the state to the All Progressives Congress candidate on February 25th, 2023. In the meantime, a new poll sponsored by international media organization Bloomberg News puts Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter Obi, in the lead among other candidates for the February 25th election. According to the poll, which is conducted by a premise data call for Bloomberg News and released today, the LP flag bearer got 66% of 93% of respondents of the vote, while his All Progressives Congress and People's Democratic Party rivals, Senator Bolatu and Atiku Bubukar, both got 18 and 10% respectively. Premise Data Corps explained that it polled a total of 2,384 Nigerians of different ages, gender, and location across the six geopolitical zones of the country between January 26th and February 4th via a smartphone app. This is the second poll by Bloomberg, but in, will be in the lead. And the first poll released in September, Mr. Obi scored 72%, a bit higher 
than his latest score. A number of polls conducted by different organizations, including ANAP Foundation through NOI poll, also showed Mr. Albi leading other presidential candidates, although this has been dismissed by other parties as not reflecting reality. For the 2023 presidential election, just about two weeks away, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Albi, has taken his campaign to Yobe State, where he promised to tackle a challenge of out of school children and investment in agriculture, which is the main occupation of the people of the state. He made the pledge when he visited the Emir of Damaturu Al Haji Shehu Hashimi Ibn El Kaneme II, who said he shared the vision of a united Nigeria. Mr. Albi had suspended his planned rally in the state as a result of the lingering fuel scarcity and the challenge of the narrow swamp. People of Yobe live of agriculture. We will invest in it. They will go back to their farm. We will invest in it. There's so many things that are being produced today in Yobe that the world is looking for. We will invest in them and ensure that people of Yobe earn a living from it. Those youths that have taken to crime because government never cared about them, your, ma your Royal Highness will care about them. We will not come from Abuja. We will come here. What is happening today is that the government in Nigeria does not care for its people. That is what we want to reverse and start caring for our people. We have millions of out-of-school children today. Quite a number of them in Yobe State. Those are children who are intelligent because I met and discussed with them. They've learned Quran. But they said they're out-of-school children. I want to meet them at the point where they're learning Quran and teach them skill, support them, so they can start doing something. Most importantly is the oneness and unity of this great country what matters to every patriotic citizen of this great country, Nigeria, irrespective of regional, ethical, religion, and what have you. We believe in the oneness of this great country, and we need to rally around our beloved brothers and sisters in this great country to give a sense of belonging to every citizen of this country so that we will forge ahead. When he spoke to reporters after the visit to the monarch, Mr. Peter Abu spoke further on his vision for building what he calls a new nation that works for all. Our commitment is for a new Nigeria. It is not, uh, we're not in, it, in desperation. I've said it repeatedly. I am not desperate to be the president of Nigeria. I'm desperate to be, to see a working and a Nigerian that cares for the poor. And I believe that only us can offer that to Nigerians. Our commitment is for the poor because we have an idea of what we can do to pull people out of poverty. If you look at a state like Yobe, it should be one of the most thriving states because it's agricultural base. So they should be able to cultivate a lot by the support we're going to get, support we're going to attract to be able to build where there's massive agricultural revolution, which will lead to industrialization, and for exports, which will be a win-win for everybody, and pull people out of poverty. And that is our commitment. The enemy is not more formidable, but lack of leadership. We're going to tackle it by ensuring that we give it all the attention it requires, and at the same time, simultaneously, pulling people out of poverty. The more you pull people out of poverty, the more you reduce insecurity. To another presidential candidate now, that of the new Nigeria People's Party, Rabi Okokwanso, has been reacting to the fourth position scored by his party in the new poll by Bloomberg. Mr. Kokwanso explains that Nigerians should not believe in the result of such polls, but warm up to vote for him at the forthcoming elections. The NNPP presidential candidate was guest in our political program, The Verdict 2023. What they are doing is very dangerous to this country. Why and I so? want the security agencies, the federal government, and 
all those concerned, you take note of it. Now look, when uh, Muhammad Buhari started in 2003, in northern Nigeria, everybody was going to vote for Buhari, especially in 2002, to the extent that I lost my seat, mainly because of that wind. And people voting in Kano would think that everybody in this country was voting for uh, Muhammad Buhari. At the end of the day, of course, you are just talking about your own uh, area. Now that uh, people are bringing fake figures, believing that this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. And in our opinion, that paper should be put upside down. That's the fact of the matter. Upside down, that so how will it Number read four they are putting should be number one. Who, who is number four? That's Rabi Konkoso, the NNPP. We are the people on the ground. PDP and APC are crumbling. So many issues there, and we all know about it. And people are looking for an alternative in this country. And we are taking that advantage. Once again, Mr. Kwakwesu was speaking on our political program, the 2023 verdict. Ahead of the general elections, Governor Dwoye Diri of Bayelsa State and former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dogara, have asked the people of Southern Kaduna to vote out the All Progressives Congress in the state. The PDP leader stated this at a rally organized by the party in Zonkwa, Zangon Kataf local government area of Kaduna. <laughs> Supporters of the People's Democratic Party in Southern Kaduna wave party flags and bear posters of their candidates as the PDP hits Zangon Kataf local government area in Kaduna State. <laughs> Governor Doye Diri of Bayosa State and the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Yakubu Dogara, are leading the campaign for the election of the party's governorship candidate, Mr. Issa Ashiru, and the party's senatorial candidate for Southern Kaduna, Mr. Sunday Marshall. Under PDP, we experience very minor insecurity. Apart from the arranged kidnapping of the keyboard girls, arranged by the same characters. Today, Southern Kaduna cannot sleep with her two eyes closed. Is that the government you still want? No. For the years of pain that they have caused Southern Kaduna, what you will do is all the PDP from Southern Kaduna, Asa Hashuru, that is what will pin them, and that is what we must ensure happen. Describing Southern Kaduna as a stronghold of the PDP, the party's candidate in Kaduna promised to address insecurity in the state and ensure equitable distribution of appointments and infrastructure. I want to assure you that I should have given the opportunity will be governor for humanity, not for how to plan in Java or Atia. And when you are serving, you, when you are serving your humanity, you are directly serving God Almighty. So be rest assured that we'll work as brothers and sisters because we know what we did in 1999-2007. If you vote Atiku Abokar as president, Isa Mohamed Ashiru as governor, we can tell you or as a team from the Kaduna South Senatorial District that will work and lobby sufficiently for all of you to derive the dividends of democracy. The PDP plans to embark on massive campaigns in part of the state to mobilize supporters to vote out the APC across board. Still ahead on the news at 10, Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves decline by $167 million to $36.8 billion, the lowest since September 2021. We'll have details of business news. Join us again. Welcome back to the news at 10. We'll head on now to our studio in Abuja. Gloria Omizoke is standing by with more news. Hi, Gloria. Hello, Amarachi. Thank you. We continue with politics, this time in River State, where Governor Yesum Wike says the Presidential Campaign Council of the People's Democratic Party will not use any other venue for its campaign in the state except the controversial Adokiye Amesimaka Stadium. Governor Wike, who was speaking at the state PDP campaign rally in LMA local government area, also criticized the national chairman of the PDP, 
Mr. Iocha Ayu, as an anti-party agent. His criticism is based on the slip-up comment made by Mr. Ayu in Corner State, in which he unwittingly campaigned against the party. The People's Democratic Party in River State continues its campaign ahead of the elections, this time taking its campaign to LMA local government area. The governorship and legislative elections are significant for the state PDP, which intends to retain its stronghold on the oil-rich rivers. And today's campaign is termed a homecoming for the governorship candidate who began his career in the civil service as a teacher in the community secondary school, Alode, the venue of the rally. Element in PDP, River State. There is no other party in Element. And I know the group of our young men and young women that are just stepping out now for the campaign, as they indicated, they are not the campees. You are only returning. The governorship candidate who later rose to become a permanent secretary and the state accountant general promises to harness the economic potential of LME to improve its social and economic status. We will ensure that we will work with the leaders of this LGA, we will work with the council chairman to ensure that the companies here work with our government. Also to address the enthusiastic crowd is Governor Yusum Wike, who accuses the PDP national chairman of anti-party activities following his slip speech during the presidential campaign rally in Kano. Everywhere in the world was Listen, listen. PDP has brought us here and we will not continue to return them in power. You hear what your said? Yes, sir. My PDP has brought shame, and uh, they will not allow PDP to be in power. Yes, so is that a good chairman? Bad chairman. Is that not anti-party? Anti-party. Anti is the chairman not in anti-party? Anti-party. On the planned presidential rally in River State on February the 11th, no. Governor Wike insists that the campaign council must use the controversial Adokie Amiesiamaka Stadium. They said they want to do rally. I said, okay, go and take Adokia and Mesimaka. I've given them Adokia and Mesimaka last night. Some of these armed robbers in the state thought that we wouldn't know. Abia and Sakebo led talks around 12 midnight to go to Transamade, the land that belongs to River State. <laughs> Earlier, Governor Wiki led the River State PDP campaign team to receive a royal blessing from the King of LMA, Philip Osaro Obele. Well, there seems no end in sight in the disputes between the River State government and PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Well, this comes as the Director General of the Atiku Okowa Presidential Campaign Council in River State, Mr. Abiye Sekibo, is alleging an assassination attempt on his life. Mr. Sekibo, a former secretary to the River State government, said armed men who he alleged are police attaché to the state governor shot at the vehicle he was in. He narrated his experience at a press conference in Port Harcourt. Come, come and see me, sir. At about about 11:30 to 12, I received a call, and the caller said that look, the equipment at the site where that was being prepared for the PDP presidential rally are on fire. And I told myself that is not possible. Said so, no, that is they're on fire. I said, okay, let me go and see for myself. So I asked my driver to bring out the car and took um, three policemen 
let's go and see what's happening there. And this, the location is in Rainbow Town by Amadeama. As we approached the site, we saw a lineup of police Hilux vehicles on the right side of the road. And the policemen were looking at the fire. So as we approached them, I, I was about to tell my driver to, to stop so I can talk to the policemen. The next thing, the, those policemen who were watching the fire opened fire on my vehicle. They started shooting at the vehicle. So I told the driver to just keep going, to, not to stop, to keep going. So we drove off and we were shot from all sides. I realized, I, I looked at those vehicles and they were, they were Helox, police Helox vehicles attached to the governor of River State. Attached to the, gov to the governor of River State. Meanwhile, the River State government has refuted the allegation that Governor Yesom Wike knew about the attack on the State Director General of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Mr. Abiye Sekibo. The State Commissioner for Information, Mr. Chris Finebone, told Channels Television that Governor Yesom Wike has no reason to be involved in the said attack. He said it is in the place of the police whom the Director General said shot at him to clarify the issue. Now, when contacted, the public police relations officer in River State, Grace Inringe Koko, promised to get back with a police response to the accusation. To legal matters, the Court of Appeals sitting in Kano has upheld the election of Amin Wali as the Kano State PDP governorship flag bearer in the 2023 general elections. Mr. Mohamed Sani Abacha, son of the late head of state, General Sani Abacha, was in December last year declared the PDP governorship candidate by the High Court. But the appeal court today set aside the judgment of the High Court and ordered that Amin Wali be recognized as the valid governorship candidate. While the uh, counsel to Mr. Sani Abacha said they intend to study the judgment before taking the next step, Mr. Amin Wali expressed concern over court cases that are aimed at stalling the electoral processes. Meanwhile, in Taraba State, Senator Emmanuel Boacha has won the APC rerun primary ahead of the March 11 governorship election. He polled 778 votes to defeat Senator Yusuf Yusuf, who polled five votes out of 796 accredited delegates. This was, however, met with some opposition by aggrieved executives who had passed a vote of no confidence on the state's chairman of the party. Well, that's it from the nation's capital. It's back to you, Marachi. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Gloria. And here in Lagos, one of Nigeria's leading real estate and property development companies, Wemmer Board Limited, has held the maiden edition of its Real Estate Outlook Summit Conference 2023, a conference which brought together professionals in the industry, provided a platform for stakeholders to share ideas on the future of the market. This gathering of financial experts, economists, investors, government officials and other stakeholders in the real estate industry is to discuss the latest trends and provide insights into the future of the market in 2023. The conference is the brainchild of Wemmer Board Limited for professionals in the industry to brainstorm on how to advance the sector for sustainable growth. Our expectation is that this will provide all sector players the opportunity to gauge the operating environment and real estate investment opportunities with well-informed strategies towards creating sustainable growth of the real estate sector of the economy. It is a tight law that real estate sector cannot operate in isolations of the macroeconomic environment. Hence, they need to uh, proper for us to have a proper understanding of the dynamics of the economy with a view to enhancing our real estate investment decision-making process. 
The keynote speaker, the CEO of Financial Derivatives Company Limited, Mr. Brisma Krewane, speaks on the shift in the industry as it relates to leadership. There's a transition in this country taking place that is making one imperfect markets to perfect markets in that sense. And it's a long journey. Also, there's a transition of people's awareness and the demand for good governance, which is followed by the supply of good governance. The panel session then provides a platform for experts to drive conversations aimed at promoting investment, facilitating collaboration, and growing the industry. This is the mating edition of the Real Estate Outlook Summit Conference 2023, which Uema Board Limited hopes will be a premier event for professionals in the real estate industry. It's time for more business news. Here's Anne Mawudu. Thanks a lot, Amarachi. Hello and welcome to Business News. We begin with Nigeria's Forex Reserves. It has recorded another decline, extending its downward movement for the fourth consecutive week. According to data coming from the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Forex Reserves fell below $37 billion mark as the coffer dropped by $167.87 million to $36.82 billion, and that's the lowest level since September 2021. According to experts, Nigeria's low external reserves have been due to several factors, including a reduction in equity trading by foreign investors, low earnings from crude oil, amongst other factors. As the 2023 general elections draw near, the front runners have campaigned about reducing the cost of governance in Nigeria as revenue shortage bites. According to the country director in at budget, Mr. Gabriel Okewo, the current cost of governance is not sustainable and needs to be addressed going forward. The UK has narrowly avoided falling into a recession in the year 2022, and that's after the economy recorded zero growth in the last quarter of last year. According to the Office of National Statistics, despite the 0.1% in November, monthly gross domestic product data fell by 0.5% in December last year, partly due to strike actions. However, for the year 2022, GDP is estimated to have increased by 4.0%, and that's a significant slowdown coming from 7.6% growth in 2021. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Funds expect the British economy to contract by 0.6% this year as households continue to struggle with double-digit inflation. We head to the equities market now. We close today's trading session in red. Profit-taking activities continued at the markets. Ini John Mekwa has the details. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stock market reports. Well, the bear is still in charge for a second day running, but today's loss was less than yesterday. Do not fret it. 0.06% in the red and still on the 54,000 for the all share index. The market cap, however, uh, has lost just a bit right there. You know, it's still 29 trillion naira, but it used to be about 600 plus. We're getting close to that 28. Hope we don't get there. And then when we look at the market mover for today, it's MTN Nigeria. MTN Nigeria traded 691 million. Uh, in the market, investors fisted on it, and then we saw it uh, losing about two naira and dragging the market in the red. And then the sectors uh, mixed. This is a mixed one. Uh, doing very well today was oil and gas, uh, almost one percent going there, 0.72 percent. Banking marginally positive less from what we had yesterday but consumers good could not even escape that bearish touch and we see that it's in the red 0.19 percent what a week this has been uh, two days down three days up but we'll see what next week holds as we get closer to the elections that's the stock market report i mean john mekwa is back to you And that's business news. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of the news at 10 continues with Amarachi.
Thanks a lot, Anne. More than 22,000 people have died after a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck southern Turkey and northern Syria on Monday. Rescue workers still put an end the work, hoping to retrieve survivors, and more importantly, praying for miracles. On the Syrian side of the quake, President Bashar al-Assad was seen for the first time speaking to the wounded in hospital. Julian Alaika has more in Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's television studios in London for your international news around the world in five. As the death toll rises in Turkey and Syria following Monday's devastating earthquake, grief has turned to anger as bereaved communities criticize authorities for being insufficiently prepared for such a disaster. During a visit to an aid hub in Adiyaman, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan met with survivors as his government faces mounting criticism over the speed of assistance and lax enforcement of building regulations. <laughs> Meanwhile, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad is thought to have made his first visit to an earthquake-hit area after he visited the Aleppo University Hospital. A spokesman for the president issued these images of Assad alongside his wife, visiting people who were injured in the destructive disasters which has killed tens of thousands. Despite the crucial 72-hour period passing several days ago, the internationally led ongoing search and rescue efforts are yielding dividends. <laughs> This video posted on a social media website shows a young girl aged just four being pulled out of the rubble in Karam Amaras, Turkey. She was buried alive for more than 100 hours. As crews, both large and small, worked desperately to find further signs of life, prayers were held outdoors in the Turkish quake epicenter. The incident now ranks as the seventh most deadly natural disaster this century, ahead of Japan's 2011 tremor and tsunami, and approaching the 31,000 killed by a quake in neighboring Iran in 2003. In other news, a six-year-old child is among at least two people tragically killed after a driver rammed into a crowd waiting at a bus stop in Jerusalem. Israeli authorities said that the suspected attacker was neutralized at the scene by an off-duty police officer and has been identified as a 31-year-old man living in the east of the city. Tensions have soared in the Israeli annexed eastern half of the city following a Palestinian shooting last month that killed seven people in the deadliest attack in Jerusalem in over a decade. The Islamic militant group Hamas praised the suspected attack but did not immediately claim responsibility. Moldova's Prime Minister Natalia Gravelita has resigned after just 18 months in power. Her tenure has been blighted by economic turmoil and tension sparked by the war in Ukraine. The shock resignation comes after her government revealed that a Russian missile entered its airspace en route to a target in Ukraine during the latest wave of Russian attacks. During an address to the nation, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said 70 missiles were launched across Moldova, with 60 of them being shot down. The provocative move adds to the heightened risk of the war spilling over into the European Union as the Kremlin prepares to mark the first anniversary of the invasion towards the end of this month. At a press conference in Brussels on Friday morning, the Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said that Poland would decide on whether to provide uh, aircraft only with a unanimous decision among NATO allies. Elsewhere, Chinese President Xi Jinping met with the Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen in Beijing, underscoring the increasingly close ties between the two Asian nations. During the visit, she made a veiled swipe against America amid the row over an alleged spy balloon, saying his country would never accept hegemonic behavior. And finally, an innovative Croatian project set to revolutionize cooking. A robotic chef is being pioneered at this local restaurant and has been programmed to be able to rustle up about 70 different one-pot meals. Gamma Chef, as it's known, is taught digitally how to cook a meal by the restaurant's head chef, then remembers the recipes and repeats it endlessly. Five robot cookers can each produce four meals in 15 minutes or nearly 100 meals in just an hour. It took seven years for the robot's partners to turn the idea into reality.
Welcome to Sports News. Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola has insisted that he has no intention of leaving the English champions after the club were charged with more than 100 breaches of financial rules by the Premier League. Man City could face points deductions or even relegation from the English top flight if they are found guilty of the alleged breach by an independent commission. Guardiola has previously said he would walk away if he found out that he had been lied to by the club's hierarchy over allegations that they broke financial fair play rules. Argentina's World Cup winning skipper Lionel Messi and France's superstar forward Kylian Mbappe had the three-player shortlist for the best FIFA football awards. France forward Karim Benzema completed the top three in the voting by a global panel of national team captains and coaches, plus selected journalists in each of FIFA's 211 member countries, as well as fans voting online. Beth Mead, Alexia Poteas and Alex Morgan have been named as the three finalists for the Best FIFA Women's Player Award. Mead scored 11 goals in last season for Arsenal and was the Euro 2022 Golden Boot winner after scoring six goals. Morgan joins Mead on the list after winning the 2022 CONCACAF Championship with the USA, while Poteas finished top scorer in the Women's Champions League with 11 goals for the Barcelona women's side. The International Olympic Committee, the IOC, has announced that the Olympic movement will donate a million dollars to help those affected by this week's devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria. The IOC, the Olympic Council of Asia, the European Olympic Committees and the Olympic Refugee Foundation, ORF, created the emergency fund as the country's reel from Monday's 7.8 magnitude quake that has killed more than 22,000 people. And that's a wrap on Sports News. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogwens. Back to you, Marachi. Thank you, Ayo Tunde. We'd just like to make a slight correction on a story reported earlier regarding Wemmer Board, uh, Wemmer Board Limited. On the slide that we'd used earlier, we'd misspelled the name Wemmer Board, which is spelt W-E-M-A-B-O-D and not W-E-M-A-B-O-R-D as earlier spelt. We do apologize for the mistake. And the main news again. The Council of State today recommended that the Central Bank of Nigeria should print more Naira notes to allow old and new currencies circulate. At the same time, this is a fault of the implementation of the Apex Bank's Naira redesign policy, but accepted the initiative. We also informed you Nigerians continue to grapple with the challenges posed by the cash crunch as they besieged banks and ATMs for the new Naira notes after the Supreme Court stopped the CBN from implementing its earlier plan to end the Naira swap. That'll be all on the news at 10 today. Thanks for watching. I'm Amarachi Ubane. Good night and stay safe.